Hey, welcome to this video. Um, we're talking about finding angles from unit circle values. Okay, so we're going to be given an answer, right? Um, something from the unit circle, and you're going to figure out what the angle is that has that as its answer. Okay, like maybe I give you um, the answer one half, and you're going to tell me all the places on the unit circle where the answer is one half, where the coordinate is one half. Okay, so make sure you have your unit circle with you and to be able to do this. And we're going to be doing it with just one rotation around the unit circle. Okay, so this is our domain. Zero is less than two pi is less, or zero is less than theta is less than or equal to two pi. Okay, so we're never going to have a zero as an answer, but we can have two pi as the answer. Okay, because these are the same points. Right, zero and two pi correspond to that same point on the unit circle. So we're going to say, don't use 0 as an answer, instead use 2 pi. So let's see what we have to do. So a solution is given to a trig equation. So root 2 over 2. Okay, so let's go to our unit circle and figure out all the places on the unit circle where the coordinate is root 2 over 2. Okay, so let's see. That happens at pi over 4, right? That's one place where it happens. So we could write the sine at pi over 4. If we were asked what is a sine of pi over 4, the answer would be root 2 over 2. Okay? We could also be asked what is the cosine at pi over 4, right? Because the same, the, the, the x and the y are the same at pi over 4. So um, root 2 over 2 would still be the answer. Now what about if we go to the second quadrant? In the second quadrant, if I asked you what is the sine at 3 pi over 4, that answer would also be positive root 2 over 2, okay? But not the cosine. The cosine is negative, and this answer is not negative. This is positive. So then in the third quadrant, um, nope, we wouldn't have any in the third quadrant because both of them are negative in the third quadrant. But in the fourth quadrant, we would have another one, the cosine at 7 pi over 4. Okay, all four of these places with this specific trig on the unit circle the answer is root 2 over 2. Positive root 2 over 2. So these are all of the possible questions that you could be asked where root 2 over 2 is the answer. Okay, root 2 over 2 is the answer. So that's kind of what we're thinking here. What are the questions, what are the trig questions and trig angles that give this given value as your solution? So now let's jump down here and look at negative root 3 over 3. So if you have your chart, it's very, very handy. Okay, hopefully you recognize this as being a tangent or a cotangent solution. Okay, root 3 over 3 is not a unit circle answer. Okay, those are 1 halves, those are root 3 over 2's, those are root 2 over 2's, they're 1's and zeros. So hopefully you know this is not a coordinate point. This is a tangent or a cotangent, so it is a ratio. And this is what happens if we have a root 3 in the denominator. Right? And that comes from if we have 1 half over negative root 3 over 2. So these are the y values that we're looking for and the x values. Right? So that we get this ratio of um, negative root 3 over 3 as the solution. So, because the tangent is negative, either the x or the y can be negative. So in other words, we don't want to have a first quadrant or a third quadrant answer. Okay, because in the first and the third quadrant, the tangent and the cotangent are positive. And here we're told that the cotangent and tangent are negative. So this is either a second quadrant or a fourth quadrant point. Okay, that will give us this as the answer. So let's look at one of them. How about um, the first one at 7 pi over, nope, that's not. Um, how about 2 pi over 3? Okay, let's check and see 2 pi over 3. At 2 pi over 3, the x value is negative 1 half, and the y value is root 3 over 2. Right, so if we want to have a negative one half on top, that's the x value. And if we want to have a, the root three over two on the bottom, that's the y value. We're looking at the cotangent. 
at 2 pi over 3. Because the cotangent is the x over the y. So if you're looking at your chart and you find a negative root 3 over 3, you are looking at the cotangent row and the 2 pi over 3 column. So this is one place where the cotangent will be negative root 3 over 3. Okay, Kind of tricky when we have these ratio ones. Um, let's continue on down. Uh, what about at um, 5 pi over 6? Okay, at 5 pi over 6, we have negative root 3 over 2 and 1 half. If I were to put right the 1 half over the root 3 over 2, so that would be the y over the x, that would be the tangent at 5 pi over 6. Okay, so if I were asked what is the tangent at 5 pi over 6, my answer would be negative root 3 over 3. So these are the two coordinates in the second quadrant where that's going to happen. So now let's jump down to the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, we have um, something over 3, 5 pi over 3. I wanted to change color. So at 5 pi over 3, we have a positive 1 half and a negative root 3 over 2. Okay, opposite signs mean that the tangent and cotangent are negative. So we want to have the 1 half on top, so that's x over y. So we're looking at the cotangent at 5 pi over 3. Would also be a question that gives you negative root 3 over 3 as the answer. And then the last one I'm going to assume will be 11 pi over 6 has a positive root 3 over 2 and a negative 1 half as its coordinate point. So I want to have the 1 half on top. So that's going to be the tangent at 11 pi over 6. Okay, if that were the question, what is the tangent of 11 pi over 6? The answer would be negative root 3 over 3. So you want to find all of the possible trig values and their angles that give you the coordinate or the value from whatever they're asking you, right? I will tell you this one. I will give you this part. You have to tell me what your possible trigs are that have that value as their solution. Okay, so the tangents and the cotangents are the trickiest ones because they have lots of places where that happens. Now the rest of this is about the periodicity. Okay, like there's a the period, it repeats. Every 2 pi, right, we go and we have the same coordinates as we had a second ago. So in other words, pi over 6 would be here on your unit circle, right, here's pi over 6 as an angle. We divide this into sixths. This is the angle pi over 6. But if I were to go all the way around my circle, and then once again end up here at this, that would be another 13 pi over 6. So pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6 are coterminal, right? You might recognize that word coterminal, which means they have the same coordinate pair. The point is still root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So the sine at pi over 6 is the same as the sine of 13 pi over 6. So that's what we're going to do is figure out where on your unit circle what is the coterminal angle that goes along with the one that we're given. Okay, hopefully just one unit circle. So 19 pi over 6. 19 pi over 6 is clearly more than one time around your circle. Okay, so let's do a circle. Oh my goodness, how about we just do it right here in the middle. We're going to divide this into sixths. Okay, so 30 degrees is all around. There's two equally spaced angles in every one, plus your axis, of course. We're going to count 19 of them, okay, starting at the positive x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, 19 pi over 6 is coterminal with 7 pi over 6. So whatever the cosine is at 7 pi over 6, it's the same as the cosine at 19 pi over 6. So the coordinate here is negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, which means the cosine is negative root 3 over 2. 
Okay, even though you go around the circle more than once, the answer doesn't go around the circle more than once. The answer still stays the same. The point is the same whether you go around the circle once or twice or three times or whatever. Okay, the points stay the same. So our next example, a uh, sine at 11 pi over 4, we're going to divvy our circle up into fourths. Okay, to see where 11 pi over 4 happens. So every 45 degrees, we're going to put a line, and now we're going to count, starting at the positive x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 pi over 4 is coterminal with 3 pi over 4. So the sine at 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So that is the answer to the sine at 11 pi over 4 also. Okay, we're using the period. Once you go around the circle one time, um, everything repeats. So pi over 2s, those are all the 90 degrees. So we're just talking about your axes in this case. So we're going to count nine axes around your unit circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine pi over two is the same as a secant at regular pi over two. So the coordinate up here is zero comma one. So the cosine is zero, which means the secant is going to be undefined. So at 9 pi over 2, the secant is undefined because the cosine is 0. Okay, one last example. Negative 10 pi over 3. So we're dividing our 180 into thirds. So in other words, 6 equal parts. Now we're not going to count our 270 or our 90. Okay, and we're going to go in a negative direction. Negative 10 pi over 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 pi over 3 is here, the same as positive 2 pi over 3. Okay, so these are coterminal angles. Negative 10 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 are coterminal. So the coordinate up here is negative 1 half and root 3 over 2. So the cotangent is, of course, the x value over the y value. So negative 1 half over root 3 over 2 would simplify to negative root 3 over 3. And that would be the answer for the cotangent at negative 10 pi over 3. So you're going to use the period, right? We're counting how many times are we going around the circle, hitting every fourth or hitting every sixth or hitting every second, or hitting every third. Okay, to get the, use that period, period idea. And then the top ones, we're just writing down all of the trigs that give you this answer from the unit circle. Have a great day.